Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Let's Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another beautiful, completely vanilla ship from the Steam Workshop. Now this one is the Strident Battle Cruiser, created by Greasy Turtle. Now I hope I didn't pronounce his name incorrectly, but let's have a look around the ship. We're going to do the standard, we'll look around the exterior, I'll talk about what really draws my eye to this ship. Now the first thing that kind of caught my eye with this is how the upper deck reminds me of almost some sort of submarine where we've got the main sort of conning tower up in the middle and then it slopes down into this area and something that you guys have requested a lot for me to really look at is ships that are more designed for combat in space engineers so up front we have got ourselves six missile launchers on two sides so that makes a total of 12 rockets going down range at a time extremely dangerous as the hull actually fits out into this area we've got the first docking area and out on the side we have three Gatling cannons to deter them fighters and underneath we've got another three as well now talking about hidden cockpits this is a great way of hiding your sort of bridge your cockpit area but at the same time giving it a great view this cockpit or this bridge area has actually been tucked underneath so you can see the Gatling guns as they fire the Gatling guns are also going to protect the cockpit from incoming missiles we've also got two laser antennas on the front just a very beautiful and quite smart way of designing a bridge on the outside of the hull of the ship. But saying that, remember, if the ship is attacked from the bottom, that bridge is going to be completely exposed. And in terms of space, there is no top, bottom or any sort of direction, so ships can come from pretty much any angle. But that's pretty obvious. So as we took into this area here, we've got the venting behind the turrets, and we've got this really nice little ball added just to do some detail. And notice how he's contrasted three colours together we've got the green sort of army color we've got the gray and we've got that lighter gray sort of ball effect there once again colors used to great effect adding a lot of detail so as the armor ramps up into this area we've got another one of the rocket turrets just notice how this front part of the hull here starts to slope into this and he's used a lot of angles in this design so this is not a traditionally sort of round ship but by adding all them angles together he's creating multiple ships well shapes and give it more definition so as we turn into this area, a very important part of any survival ship is an ability to store the other ships that are going to be aboard your ship. So if we actually took here through this rather small hangar door, it's only two large blocks wide, we've got the small sort of hangar bay. Perfect for fighters or different ships that you may find. So let's tuck ourselves back out and we'll go along to the rear engine bay. Now we've got two nacelles on both sides that house two of the larger thrusters. And you'll notice throughout this design of the ship, there is a lot of hydrogen thrusters and it is a purely hydrogen design. So this means it can travel both on and out of planets with not too much trouble at all. But it does rely on that hydrogen power source that can sometimes be hard to get your hands on ice depending whereabouts you are. So as we come into this area underneath the thrusters, you can see all of them thrusters, all them hydrogen packs underneath to allow it to levitate down into the planet's atmosphere, atmosphere without having too much issue. And you'll notice the other problem with the ship is since the majority of the thrusters are at the rear power pack, if the front of the ship gets damaged or separated, it has very little thrusters to actually propel it in that area. So under attack, I'll definitely focus these rear engine bay cells first to cut the power of its acceleration and deacceleration. So back into this area, it's a very simple sort of thruster housing. It reminds me a little bit of the red ship, how the housing actually covers the top area of the thruster, but then retracts in towards the bottom and then actually rounds off underneath. And there's a sneaky little Gatling turret under there for good measure. But let's pop inside and I'll show you some of the detailing that's going on in there. So now we're entering through the front little airlock. So through the front airlock, we've got ourselves this little corner piece that turns into this first little hallway. Nothing too big in here, very small and narrow hallway. You couldn't really modify it too much in a survival sort of stance. But as we enter here, we've got the oxygen generator and we've got multiple rooms here that you could actually use for various different things depending on your survival. It feels like it's been thought out of. As we go a little bit lower, we've got logistics planning so we can actually tuck ourselves into here and you can see we have a sort of hidden away cockpit area where we can actually control the ship if we don't want to be on one of the main sort of bridges below where we can see out as well. So let's actually tuck ourselves back up the deck 
and into this area here so going through back into this area we've got another catwalk with gyroscopes at little intervals and each one of these little rooms could serve as an observation area or a bedroom depending on whatever you want it to be but the size of them is quite small but i do like how he's put the vents and the windows and it just gives that really nice effect you can imagine staying in here and maybe passing by a planet it gives me that sort of i think it was an episode of doctor who a long long time ago when the windows that looked exactly like this where there was a glass sheet then separated by a metal sort of grid anyway let's continue on with our little tour so as we come back into this area we're going to go downstairs and enter into what is just a large car container in the center of this room as we continue going to the back you can see we've got one of the hydrogen tanks in a rusty orange color i really like and we took down to this deck this will take us out to the medical bay on this side so you can see the medical bay over in that area and as we took around this side this is taking us around that hydrogen and cargo container can function sort of thing we've got another control panel here so we can control it from the engine bay if the front is severed little gyroscope down there and as we continue back this way we go back into the hangar now what i quite like about the hangar i can only really see one drawback to this place there's no connector so it would be really hard to rearm a ship quite fast but we have got access to the little doors here so let's actually drop our leggies down here and open one of them up if we can so there's the hangar bay on the left there's the hangar bay on the right, and that is the hangar vents. So I can actually control the venting of these hangars. So we can close them both up, and we can actually vent or seal up the air within this chamber itself. Let's continue moving, and I'll use my little feet to get myself around. So we'll open up this door, seal the airlock up behind us, just in case there's a depressurization problem. And we'll head back into this area. So as we took ourselves down and underneath... We have the cryo chamber room on the left and we've got a doorway to what I believe is the observation bridge on the front. So here's the cryo bay. Very simple, quite dark room, more control points. The control points, leaving them around like this is both a good and a bad thing. People or players can hack them and take control of your ship, but at the same time it allows you to control the ship from wherever you are or whatever you're doing. So let's open up this to the command deck. We're greeted by this beautiful light and just look how they've indented them walls there just by using them half blocks. Really nice little idea. And we're at the main command deck, giving us that beautiful view of them gatling turrets as they go off. Let's take this thing for a little bit of a spin though and see exactly how it flies. Now I picked the ship mainly because I was expecting great things in all departments. It was it was a real sort of combat vessel, something that could inflict some damage. So we've got the rocket pods up front if we select them. So you can see the rockets going out from them. That is quite a deadly blow. Acceleration is extremely good. Let's check our deacceleration. Quite a lot slower because we've only got two thrusters on either side slowing us down as well as them two small ones but our acceleration is extremely good as you can see by six thrusters on the back and our gyroscopes is very good as well so we can also just turn the ship to slow ourselves down it is definitely a battle cruiser it's small it's agile and it would rip apart an enemy fleet the only problem is i think a lot of other battle cruisers out there are armed with many more weapons anyway check this out on the workshop it's a great base platform for any sort of survival encounter really and i'll see you next time